According to Reuters, Israel appeared to confirm that new negotiations were underway to recover hostages held by Hamas, after a source said Israel's intelligence chief met the Prime Minister of Qatar, a country mediating in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told a press conference on Saturday the war in Gaza was existential and must be fought until victory. He said Gaza would be demilitarized and under Israeli security control. According to Bloomberg, the crippling tariffs that China's government imposed on Australian wine exports almost three years ago could be lifted shortly, Australia's Trade Minister Don Farrell said on Sunday. China started reviewing the sanctions in late November and that process was well and truly underway, Farrell said in an interview with Sky News. According to Bloomberg, for the China bulls on Wall Street, 2023 is a year to forget. Global investment banks turned almost unanimously optimistic on the market around this time last year, only to be confounded by a 14% drop in the MSCI China index. According to Reuters, Russia launched an overnight air assault on Ukraine using an Iskander ballistic missile, a cruise missile and attack drones, Ukraine's Air Force said on Sunday. Ukraine's air defense systems destroyed the cruise missile and 20 attack drones, the Air Force said on the Telegram messaging app. The Iskander missile did not reach its target, it said, without providing details. According to Bloomberg, Private equity giants are turning to a new take on an old solution to higher debt costs for MA deals, borrow all of the money they can and defer paying it back. KKR Company is asking private credit funds for a so-called payment-in-kind feature that would allow it to push off all cash interest payments if and when it purchases a 50% stake in healthcare analytics company Cotivity Inc. The company is looking for $5 billion to $6 billion of debt for the deal. According to Reuters, Oak casks, once used to store bourbon and wine, are stacking up in a distillery near New Delhi, filled with aging whiskey as workers churn out almost 10,000 bottles a day of Indian single malt Indri, recently named the world's best whiskey. Sugarcane and mustard fields, not peat bogs, ring the distillery, where the two-year-old Indian brand's owner Piccadilly is ramping up production and building a three-hole golf course to lure connoisseurs and tipplers in the whiskey-loving nation. According to Bloomberg, all eyes will be on the Bank of Japan when it sets policy on Tuesday, as Governor Kazuo Ueda continues to inch toward ending the world's last negative interest rate regime. Chances are it won't happen this time. People familiar with the matter indicate that Japanese authorities aren't in a hurry to move while they await hard evidence of sustainable inflation. According to Reuters, Sheikh Mishal al Ahmad al Sabah was named as Kuwait's new emir on Saturday after the death of his brother Sheikh Nawaf al Ahmad al Sabah, aged 86. Sheikh Mishal, 83, spent much of his career helping build the Gulf state's security and defense apparatus before stepping into the public eye when he became Crown Prince three years ago. According to Reuters, Britain's national grid has started removing components supplied by a unit of China-backed Nari Technologies from the electricity transmission network over cybersecurity fears, the Financial Times reported on Sunday. The decision came in April after the utility sought advice from the National Cybersecurity Center, a branch of the nation's signals intelligence agency GCHQ, the newspaper quoted a Whitehall official as saying. According to Reuters, Debris from a downed drone killed a civilian in the Odessa region, the governor of the southern Ukrainian region said on Sunday, after Ukraine's air force said it had destroyed 20 drones that Russia launched overnight. Air defense systems destroyed nine Iran-made attack drones over Odessa, Governor Ole Kuyper said on the Telegram messaging app, calling it the third Russian air assault on the region in the past week. According to Bloomberg, like his immediate predecessor, Kuwait's new ruler is taking over in his 80s and will be confronted with the same economy hobbling political dysfunction that has for years doomed reforms. But there are differences in this succession as well as similarities, and how they play out will help dictate whether 83-year-old Emir Sheikh Mashal al-Ahmed al-Jaber al-Sabah can break the OPEC member state free of its paralysis. According to Bloomberg, Short seller Jim Chanos has switched to a bullish stance on the U.S. gambling industry's prospects, he told the Financial Times in an interview. The hedge fund manager, who is best known for his bearish bet against Enron Corp., said he had reassessed his pessimism about online sports betting despite previously shorting DraftKings Inc. in May 2021.
he exited his short position in July last year, booking a $10 million profit. According to Bloomberg, Anglo-American PLC headed off a legal challenge that could have seen it face a class action over allegations that a mine in which it held a stake for almost 50 years poisoned tens of thousands of people in Zambia with lead. South Africa's High Court dismissed an application for the case brought by 12 plaintiffs from the town of Kabwe with costs, according to a copy of the ruling distributed on Saturday. Mbuyi Samoleele and Lide, the law firms for those plaintiffs, had said they could represent as many as 142,000 plaintiffs. They will appeal the ruling. According to Reuters, China's state council, led by Premier Li Chang, on Sunday published rules that come into force on May 1 for the supervision and management of non-banking payment institutions. The rules, among other measures, implement tougher licensing regulations and call for stronger risk management of non-bank payment platforms to prevent misappropriation of funds and other criminal activities, People's Bank of China, the country's central bank, and the Ministry of Justice said in a joint statement on Sunday. According to Bloomberg, the price Russians pay for eggs has surged amid reports of shortages in some regions, prompting criticism from President Vladimir Putin and government action to secure supplies of the staple ingredient that's used in many favorite holiday dishes. Egg prices have risen at a rate of more than 4% for four weeks in a row, according to Federal Statistics Service data. Since the start of the year, they have become 42% more expensive, according to Bloomberg calculations using that data. According to Bloomberg, a frenzy around obesity drugs made Novo Nordisk A.S. Europe's biggest stock market success story of 2023. Repeating the trick won't be so easy. Shares of Novo, which makes the diabetes drug Ozempic and weight loss medicine Wegovi, have risen 42% this year, as investors latched on to the growth potential of a market that some analysts predict could reach $100 billion by 2030. The rally made it Europe's biggest company and pushed the Danish firm's value past the size of its domestic economy. According to Bloomberg, Wall Street's biggest banks are warning that existing assumptions around much-needed green finance will no longer hold if the U.S. goes ahead with stricter capital requirements. The Basel III endgame, as the planned rules have been dubbed, marks the final implementation stage in the U.S. of regulations created after the financial crisis of 2008. Banks will need to set aside more capital, which will make it costlier for them to provide finance. Proposed in July by a group of U.S. authorities that includes the Federal Reserve, the rules will fundamentally alter how banks in the world's biggest economy approach risk, EY says. According to Reuters, the chief executive of Swiss banking giant UBS, Sergio Ermotti, is not convinced central banks have got inflation under control, he said in a newspaper interview published on Sunday. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said last week that interest rate increases were likely over in the United States and lower rates were coming into view but central banks have stuck to plans to keep policy tight well into next year. According to Reuters, Abu Dhabi is set to buy a stake in a key Turkish port, according to four sources aware of the deal, in a further sign of a rapprochement between the once bitter geopolitical rivals. Under the potential agreement, State-controlled group AD Ports Group would invest in an entity to be established by the Turkey Wealth Fund to run the Aegean coast port of Izmir, said two of the sources. The sources requested anonymity to discuss details of the deal that has yet to be finalized. According to Reuters, Indian seamers Arshdeep Singh and Avesh Khan ripped through South Africa to bowl them out for 116 in the first one-day international on Sunday, the host's lowest total at home in the 50-over format. South Africa won the toss and elected to bat first on the same wicket that was used in Thursday's final 2020 clash but the decision proved disastrous, and India exploited the seamer-friendly conditions superbly to set up a very modest chase for victory. According to Bloomberg, Chileans are heading to the polls in a second attempt to approve a new constitution and move past the period of political and economic uncertainty set off by the Charter's rewrite four years ago. Sunday's referendum asks voters if they're in favor or against the text written by a right-leaning constitutional council to replace the current constitution, dating back to the dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Voting centers will close at 6 p.m. local time in Santiago, and the result is expected to be published one to two hours after that. According to Reuters, Russia has no interest in extending the Black Sea grain deal, 
The RIA news agency reported on Sunday, citing Russia's agriculture minister Dmitry Petrushev. He added that to a large extent this is a political decision, but Russia will continue to export its grain, as it has its buyers. According to Bloomberg, hedge fund Elliott Associates was granted permission to appeal its loss in court against the London Metal Exchange over a nickel squeeze, extending the legal battle over the latter's decision last year to cancel billions of dollars worth of trades. Elliott applied to the English Court of Appeal and was granted permission to appeal the judgment that went in the LME's favor last month, according to a filing from Hong Kong Exchanges in Clearing Limited, the parent company of London Metal Exchange. The timing of the appeal, which it plans to contest, is yet to be determined, according to the disclosure Sunday. According to Yahoo Finance, Congress often heads home at the end of the year with a long to-do list left undone. But as Washington begins to empty out this week, Congress is set to leave a remarkably long menu of business world items on the table. The House of Representatives is unlikely to return until 2024, while the Senate is set to return next week to search for compromise around border policy. According to Yahoo Finance, you think you have money woes. I've been laid off from a good, high-paying job, I've had horrible credit. I've had negative balances in my bank accounts and have been so broke that I had a car repossessed, writes Lynette Kalfani Cox, a money coach, in her new book, Bounce Back, The Ultimate Guide to Financial Resilience. I've been through a ridiculously costly divorce. According to Bloomberg, emerging market bonds and currencies have powered ahead this month on optimism over the Federal Reserve's pivot to interest rate cuts. Falling oil prices are set to deliver a further boost. Brent crude's slide of more than 20% from its September peak suggests inflation is set to slow even further in developing nations in coming months, which will provide another reason to buy their bonds. Emerging market currencies are also poised to gain as finances of net oil importers improve. According to Bloomberg, OPEC's one-time nemesis, U.S. shale, is rearing its head just months after the sector was all but written off as a threat to the cartel's sway over worldwide oil markets. Drillers from the Permian Basin in West Texas to the Bakken Shale of North Dakota have ramped up oil production well beyond what analysts foresaw, pushing output to a record just as OPEC and its allies put the brakes on supplies in a bid to arrest price declines. According to Yahoo Finance, as the old adage goes, what goes up must come down. The pandemic proved to be a boon for a wide range of companies, from Zoom to Peloton to DoorDash. But once the hype faded, some companies translated their burst of popularity to a long-term business, while others are looking like one-hit wonders with dying fads. According to Reuters, North Korea fired an unidentified type of ballistic missile on Sunday, Japan's Coast Guard and the South Korean military said. The missile was launched toward the sea off North Korea's east coast, according to the South Korean Joint Chiefs of Staff. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's pivot toward interest rate cuts is spreading holiday cheer in the White House, where the improved prospects for an economic soft landing are a boon for President Joe Biden's bid for another term. Biden has seen his poll numbers sag amid voter anxiety over a surge in the cost of living, and he would face a bigger headwind to winning another term in November if the U.S. tumbled into a recession. As top aides continue to tout the strength of the economy, including low unemployment, easing price pressures and sturdy growth, falling rates would bolster his case to voters. According to Yahoo Finance, at the center of Washington's effort to manage America's debt are regular sales of new Treasury bills. For all involved, these are ideally little-noticed happenings. But weak demand for some recent auctions is raising concerns about how smoothly the government will be able to finance its ballooning debt in the years ahead with higher interest rates and record debt levels on the horizon for the foreseeable future. According to Bloomberg, the case for investing in cannabis companies is, in theory, the strongest it's ever been. Weed shops are popping up on street corners across the U.S. at a frantic pace, while the 2024 presidential election offers an impetus for drug reform. And yet the stocks underlying the industry are floundering, with even the bulls growing tired of waiting. An index tracking the shares of 100 marijuana-related companies has tumbled more than 15% so far this year, after touching an all-time low in October. According to Bloomberg, Egypt's Suez Canal Authority said it's closely following tensions in the Red Sea and any impact on canal crossings, 
after Yemeni militant attacks on vessels hundreds of miles to the south prompted major shipping lines to temporarily avoid the region. Since November 19 55 ships have diverted to use the Cape of Good Hope route between Europe and Asia rather than the canal, SCA chairman Osama Rabi said Sunday in a statement. So far that's a small proportion of the 2,128 vessels that crossed Egypt's waterway in the same period, he said. According to Yahoo Finance, note, a version of this article was published on tker.co. Stocks rallied last week, with the SP500 rising 2.5% to close at 4,719.19. The index is now up 22.9% year-to-date, up 31.9% from its October 12, 2022 closing low of 3,577.03, and down 1.6% from its January 3, 2022 record closing high of 4,796.56. According to Reuters, Liverpool made history on Sunday by beating Manchester United for the first time in the Women's Super League in a 2-1 victory and moving level with United in the table on points. Chelsea remained top of the table with 25 points after their 3-0 victory on Sunday at Bristol City. According to Yahoo Finance, the technology sector is set to outperform again in 2024, with cybersecurity and cloud networking stocks among those best positioned, according to Barclays. A major catalyst. Artificial intelligence. According to Bloomberg, Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago President Austin Goolsby said it's too early to declare victory in the central bank's inflation fight, and decisions on interest rate cuts will be based on incoming economic data. We've made a lot of progress in 2023, but I still caution everyone, it's not done. Goolsby said Sunday in an interview on CBS's Face the Nation. And so the data is going to drive what's going to happen to rates. According to Reuters, Turkish Foreign Minister Hakan Fidan asked his U.S. counterpart Antony Blinken in a call on Sunday for Washington to use its influence over Israel to halt Israeli attacks on Gaza and the West Bank, a Turkish diplomatic source said. Turkey, which supports a two state solution to the decades old conflict, has harshly criticized Israel calling for a full ceasefire and for Israeli leaders to be tried in international courts for war crimes, and slammed Western support for Israel. According to Reuters, Sudan has ordered three diplomats from Chad to leave the country within 72 hours, saying the individuals were, persona non grata, the Sudanese state news agency reported on Sunday. The move by Sudan follows Chad declaring four Sudanese diplomats at the Sudanese embassy in N'Djamena as unwelcome a day earlier, the agency added. According to Yahoo Finance, you can't say it was an uneventful year for Tesla. A lot of has happened, both good and bad, that produced an interesting 2023 for the brand, to say the least, and sets up an intriguing 2024 ahead for the EV stalwart. While investors may have enjoyed a sizable 100% return on the stock so far this year, future returns are far from certain, and the heavily traded Tesla stock tends to experience outsize moves throughout the year. Just look at the 15% drawdown since the stock hit its 52-week high back in July. According to Bloomberg, Texas city officials told some local residents to shelter in place after a chemical release at Marathon Petroleum Corpy's Galveston Bay refinery. We are continuing to closely monitor the situation. There are no residential areas affected, and no air monitoring readings that indicate danger to life or health, city officials said in a Facebook post. According to Reuters, two Egyptian security sources said on Sunday that Israel and Hamas are both open to a renewed ceasefire and hostage release, although disagreements remain on how it would be implemented. Hamas is insisting on setting the list of hostages to be released unilaterally and demanding that Israeli forces withdraw behind predetermined lines, the sources told Reuters. According to Reuters, Germany's government faced calls on Sunday to help farmers and car buyers by revisiting cuts forced upon it by a court ruling which blew a 60 billion euro hole in its budget. A coalition move to end subsidies for agricultural diesel drew criticism from Green lawmaker and agriculture minister Jem Ozdemir and from legislators belonging to finance minister Christian Lindner's business-friendly liberals. According to Reuters, Liverpool missed out on reclaiming top spot as they were held to a 0-0 draw by Manchester United at Anfield in the Premier League on Sunday, ending their perfect home record this season. 
Jurgen Klopp's side had been knocked out of first place by Arsenal earlier on Sunday and would have recaptured a place at the summit with a win but lacked their usual goal threat. According to Reuters, as Roma suffered a 2-0 defeat at Bologna after a Nicola Moro strike and Rasmus Christensen's own goal saw the fired-up hosts climb to fourth spot in Serie A on Sunday. Roma, missing several key players like forwards Romelu Lukaku and Paolo Dybala due to injuries and suspension, struggled to match Bologna's aggression, failed to retain possession and were never able to control the match. According to Reuters, Ukraine and the European Commission will soon assess Kyiv's progress on aligning its legislation with that of the European Union and a framework for EU accession talks is expected in the spring, President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Sunday. In his nightly video address, he reminded the country that EU leaders decided at a summit on Thursday to launch formal membership talks with Ukraine. The country faces uncertainty over the future of vital wartime foreign assistance, notably from the United States. According to Reuters, signs reading, SOS, and, help, three hostages, in Hebrew were found on the walls of a Gaza building where three Israeli hostages had been hiding before they were mistakenly killed, Israel's military said on Sunday. The military distributed photographs of the white cloth signs written in red, likely with leftover food. They were hung on a building about 200 meters from where the hostages were shot, military spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari said. According to Reuters, Arsenal returned to the top of the Premier League with a 2-0 home victory against Brighton Hove Albion before morning leaders Liverpool played out a disappointing 0-0 stalemate at home to Manchester United on Sunday. Goals by Gabriel Jesus and Kai Havertz sealed the points for Arsenal to lift them to 39 points from 17 games with Liverpool and Aston Villa both on 38 points. According to Reuters, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag credited their almost perfect defending for a 0-0 draw at Liverpool in the Premier League on Sunday after they crashed out of Europe in midweek. On a night when many fans and pundits expected even more misery for United, they instead ended Liverpool's sparkling 11-game run of victories at Anfield in all competitions and stopped their rivals from reclaiming top spot in the table. According to Reuters, Illumina said on Sunday that it would divest cancer diagnostic test maker Grail after the companies battled both U.S. and European antitrust enforcers for more than two years and faced fierce opposition from activist investor Carl Icahn. The divestiture will be executed through a third-party sale or capital markets transaction, San Diego-based Illumina said in a statement, adding that it would finalize the terms by second quarter of 2024. According to Reuters, Canada will announce next week that all new cars will have to be zero emissions by 2035, the Toronto Star reported on Sunday, as Ottawa is set to unveil new regulations in the latest example of countries around the world pushing for electrification. New rules, known as the Electric Vehicle Availability Standard, will also shorten the wait times to get an electric vehicle, a senior government official was cited as saying by the publication. According to Bloomberg, more companies are tapping blockchain-based private credit as they hunt for financing in a world of elevated interest rates, sparking a partial revival in a sector that slumped amid last year's crypto crisis. Active private loans via digital ledgers are up 55% since the start of 2023 to about $408 million as of November 28, according to RWA.xyz, a platform that tracks the debt. That's still lower than a near $1.5 billion peak last June and a fraction of the booming $1.6 trillion traditional market for private credit. According to Bloomberg, the best way to play the Federal Reserve's pivot toward monetary easing is to load up on shorter maturity debt that still provides a 4% plus yield. That's the overarching sentiment in the Treasury market as the Fed, with inflation falling, gears up to lower rates and support a soft landing. Meanwhile, a chunk of the nearly $6 trillion parked in money market mutual funds has new reason to move into treasury notes as investors fear rates on cash-like investments could soon plunge. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. Asia kicks off the last full trading week of 2023 on Monday, with the US Federal Reserve fueled surge in risk appetite from last week losing steam and investors gearing up for the last major central bank meeting of the year from Japan. According to Bloomberg, convinced the Federal Reserve pivot is finally in, 
Some investors are on the hunt for the juiciest yields fixed income has to offer. They're finding creative ways to stoke returns. Buying Austria's century bonds, New Zealand's quasi-sovereign securities, the debt of supranationals and Pakistan's hard currency notes. According to Bloomberg, Asian stocks are set for a weaker open after U.S. shares ended a six-day rally as Federal Reserve officials pushed back against bets of aggressive interest rate cuts next year. Equity futures in Australia, Japan and Hong Kong point to early losses when trading resumes on Monday. While the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 index closed at a record high, the benchmark SP500 index ended slightly lower. The dollar rose with short-dated U.S. Treasury yields as New York Fed President John Williams said on CNBC that it's too early for officials to begin thinking about lowering borrowing costs. According to Bloomberg, halfway through Jamie Dimon's special incentive to stay five more years atop J.P. Morgan Chase Company, insiders are predicting more senior leadership changes to help potential successors gather experience. A management shuffle in mid-2021 put two talented deputies, Jennifer Peepschick and Marianne Lake, into the spotlight as the board prepared to grant Diamond a bonus if he remains chief executive officer another half-decade. But with neither the clear frontrunner, colleagues say the two consumer banking co-heads will likely need to tackle new assignments before one is ready to run the whole company. According to Reuters, Hong Kong's luxury retailers are adapting to fewer wealthy Chinese shoppers visiting the city and a shift towards tourists flocking to Instagram-coveted spots in trendy districts rather than splashing out on pricey branded gear. Before the pandemic, the Chinese Special Administrative Region had bucked global trends of declining demand for multi-brand department stores and ultra-luxury brands largely due to its attractiveness to high-spending mainland visitors. According to Reuters, Australian construction materials firm Adbry said on Monday it is in exclusive talks with CRH and the borrow group Thai Limited for the two companies to buy shares that borrow does not already own, in a deal worth about 2.1 billion Australian dollars. According to Reuters, a growing number of Chinese semiconductor design companies are tapping Malaysian firms to assemble a portion of their high-end chips keen to hedge risks in case the U.S. expands sanctions on China's chip industry, sources said. The companies are asking Malaysian chip packaging firms to assemble a type of chip known as graphics processing units, according to three people with knowledge of the discussions. According to Bloomberg, stock investments, down 30%. Salary package, down 30%. Investment property, down 20%. As Thomas Joe reflects on 2023, his household finances are front of mind. It's just heartbreaking, the 40-year-old financial worker from Shanghai said. The only thing that still keeps me going is the thought of keeping my job so I can support my big family. According to Bloomberg, many of Japan's tofu producers are struggling to stay in business, even as people eat more of the plant-based source of protein. Not Yamami Company, which is forecasting record profits thanks to automation and mass production. At its newest factory at the foot of Mount Fuji, the tofu maker, one of the few that's listed, can produce 15,000 units of the bean curd per hour. That's several times more than its rivals, the company says. Yamami is able to tap pristine groundwater whose temperature is stable at the site, key for making tofu, an important part of Japanese cuisine for centuries. According to Bloomberg, Chile rejected the second proposal for a new constitution in as many years, highlighting the failure of the nation's political system to channel social demands into a new set of basic laws. One of the country's main right-wing parties, which had helped draft the current proposal, conceded defeat on Sunday with 54% of votes tallied, 55% of them were against the text and 45% in favor. The result, broadly in line with recent polls, means that the current charter dating from the Augusto Pinochet dictatorship will remain in place. According to Reuters, Ukraine and Russia launched a swarm of drones at each other's territories on Sunday as both sides step up attacks, with the Russian assault reportedly killing one person in Odessa and the Ukrainian strike targeting a Russian military airfield. Ukraine's Air Force said on Sunday morning that it had destroyed 20 drones and a cruise missile that Russia launched overnight. Nine of the drones were downed over the southern Odessa region, with falling debris starting a fire in a residential house and killing one person. According to Reuters, 
Australian Building Products Group Adbri Limited and pension firm Link Group were among three takeover targets facing bids worth $3.5 billion Australian dollars made on Monday in a year-end rush of deals involving listed companies. Adbri shares jumped 31% after it said it was in exclusive talks with International Building Materials Group CRH and major shareholder Barrow Group for a $2.1 billion Australian dollars takeover offer. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan is widely expected to keep the world's last negative interest rate intact on Tuesday, with investors set to scour comments for hints on if, and when, authorities might scrap the policy next year. Almost all 52 economists surveyed by Bloomberg forecast no change in major policy settings for the short-term rate and yield curve control mechanism at the policy meeting that concludes on December 19. According to Reuters, Asia stocks got off to a cautious start on Monday in a week where Japan's central bank might edge further away from its uber-easy policies, while a key reading on U.S. inflation is expected to underpin market pricing of interest rate cuts there. The Bank of Japan meets Tuesday amid much chatter that it is considering how and when to move away from negative interest rates. None of the analysts polled by Reuters expected a definitive move at this meeting, but policymakers might start laying the groundwork for an eventual shift. According to Bloomberg, when a Walgreens Boots Alliance Inc. affiliate bought Summit Health City MD around a year ago, the pharmacy group's management hailed the deal as transformational for its push into primary healthcare. Twelve months later, the $8.9 billion takeover has struggled to deliver cost synergies and Walgreens's creditworthiness has just been cut to junk for the first time since its formation. According to Bloomberg, Mitsubishi UFJ Trust and Banking Corp said it will buy Australian data manager Link Administration Holdings Limited in a deal valued at about 1.11 billion Australian dollars, as Japanese lenders build on a slew of commitments to acquire higher returning assets abroad. The unit of Japan's largest bank, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group Inc., will pay $2 Australian dollars and 10 cents per share, a 23.5% premium to Friday's closing stock price, according to a statement from Mitsubishi on Monday. Link, in a separate statement, said its board unanimously recommended shareholders vote in favor of the transaction. The stock surged 27% to 2 Australian dollars and 16 cents as of 10:46 a.m. in Sydney. According to Bloomberg, three straight years of outsized declines in the yen look set to end in 2024. That's the view of market participants polled by Bloomberg, who on balance see the currency rallying next year as the Bank of Japan exits the world's last negative interest rate regime and its global peers cut borrowing costs. According to Bloomberg, oil rose following its first weekly gain since late October as major shipping lines suspended transit through the Red Sea, highlighting the risk to the vital artery for international crude trade. Global benchmark Brent rose above $77 a barrel after gaining 0.9% last week to snap a seven-week streak of declines. West Texas Intermediate was near $72. Egypt's Suez Canal Authority said it's closely following tensions in the Red Sea after the U.S. said it shot down 14 drones launched from Iran-backed Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. According to Reuters, the yen dipped slightly on Monday as the Bank of Japan kicked off its two-day monetary policy meeting, with traders nervously awaiting a decision on whether the dovish central bank could finally unwind its ultra-loose monetary settings. In the broader market, currencies started the week on a cautious note after large swings last week mainly driven by a slew of central bank meetings, which included rate decisions from the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England. According to Bloomberg, a blank check company set up by former New York Yankees all-star Alex Rodriguez is planning to merge with satellite communications provider Link Global Inc., according to people with knowledge of the matter. Slamcorp, a special-purpose acquisition company, signed a letter of intent to merge with Link, with the combined company expected to list on the Nasdaq stock exchange, according to the people, asking not to be identified as the deal hasn't been made public. The company is expected to be valued at no less than $800 million upon the closing of the transaction, according to People. According to Bloomberg, Japanese chip gear maker Kakusai Electric Corp. is expanding its staff in China in anticipation of an increase in demand from the world's largest semiconductor market in 2024. Chief Executive Officer Fumiyuki Kanai, who presided over the company's initial public offering in October, 
foresees sustained investment in capacity in China and plans to expand his local support teams there to better serve clients. Kakusai is seeking to extend the 66% rally in its stock price since its IPO less than two months ago. According to Bloomberg, Chinese battery maker REPT Batero Energy Company, a unit of Singshan Holding Group Company, is set to start trading in Hong Kong on Monday after an initial public offering that priced near the bottom of the marketed range. The company raised about 2.1 billion Hong Kong dollars after selling 116 million shares at 18 Hong Kong dollars and 30 cents each. They were offered at 18 Hong Kong dollars and 20 cents to 20 Hong Kong dollars and 60 cents apiece in Hong Kong's fourth largest IPO this year. According to Bloomberg, a key tourism area in Australia's far north has been inundated with life-threatening flooding after days of torrential rainfall in the wake of a tropical cyclone. Major flood and strong wind warnings have been issued across several areas in Queensland state by the Bureau of Meteorology, with river levels reaching more than 10 metres high in some areas. The Australian Broadcasting Corp. reported at least nine people were stranded on rooftops at the indigenous community of Wujul Wujul. According to Reuters, Citigroup Inc.'s plan to set up a wholly owned securities business in China is taking longer than expected because the bank needs more time to comply with the country's data laws, Bloomberg News reported on Monday. The bank is now looking to start the China securities business around the end of 2024 at the earliest, the report added, citing people familiar with the matter. According to Reuters, oil prices rose nearly 1% in early Asian trade on Monday supported by lower exports from Russia and as attacks by the Houthis on ships in the Red Sea raised concerns of oil supply disruption. Brent crude futures climbed 69 cents, or 0.9 percent, to $77.24 a barrel by 0037 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude was at $72.08 a barrel, up 65 cents, or 0.9 percent. According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs Group added its voice to a chorus of expectations of a weaker dollar after the U.S. central bank's clearest sign yet that interest rate cuts are coming. Goldman made sweeping changes to its exchange rate forecasts after the Federal Reserve signaled a more rapid move to non-recessionary interest rate cuts, analysts including Michael Cahill wrote in a note on Friday. For the first time since September, hedge funds and other large speculators switched to a net short position against the dollar as of December 12 according to Commodity Futures Trading Commission data. According to Reuters, North Korea fired what appeared to be a long-range ballistic missile on Monday, South Korea and Japan said, its second missile launch in less than 12 hours as Pyongyang condemned a U.S.-led show of force against the nuclear-armed state. The missile was fired from an area near the capital Pyongyang towards the sea off the north's east coast and flew about 1,000 kms, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said. According to Bloomberg, since Time Group Inc. plunged its most in more than a year after its co-founder's surprise death spooked investors already grappling with the fallout from slowing growth and U.S. sanctions. The Chinese AI firm slid as much as 18% in Hong Kong on Monday, the biggest loss since July 2022. According to Bloomberg, a blistering rally in YTL Power International BHD. This year has scope to continue as better performance from its overseas assets brightens the earnings outlook for the Malaysian power producer. The share price has more than tripled in 2023, making it the biggest gainer among local companies with a market capitalization of more than 1 billion ringgit. Analysts are still calling for a buy in the stock, predicting that it could climb as much as 59% next year. According to Bloomberg, North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile toward waters off its east coast in a show of force after the U.S. and South Korea held talks on containing Pyongyang's atomic ambitions. The missile splashed down west of Japan's main northern island of Hokkaido at about 9.37 a.m., the defense ministry in Tokyo said. Vice Defense Minister Shingo Miyake told reporters the rocket appeared to be an ICBM. According to Reuters, Israeli forces launched deadly attacks up and down the Gaza Strip on Sunday, hitting a refugee camp in the north, a hospital in the south and killing a teenage girl who had lost her leg in an earlier strike, according to Palestinian officials, media and eyewitnesses. Israeli strikes on the Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza killed 90 Palestinians on Sunday, Gaza's health ministry spokesman told Reuters.
Another missile attack on a house belonging to the Shahab family killed 24 people, Hamas Aksa Radio said. According to Bloomberg, FTX Trading Limited unveiled its latest proposal for returning billions of dollars to customers and creditors, kicking off a final round of potential squabbles about how best to end the bankruptcy case of the fraud-tainted crypto firm. The reorganization plan left some of the most important questions unanswered, including whether FTX will restart its defunct crypto exchange, how the company will estimate the value of some digital tokens and how much creditors can expect to get back. According to Bloomberg, there is no doubt that the Bank of Japan is considering lifting negative interest rates in January, said Chotero Morita, chief strategist at All Nippon Asset Management Company. The BOJ focus on spring wage negotiations means that it will raise rates around January to April no matter what anyone thinks, said Morita, who was ranked number one for bonds in the Nikkei Veritas analyst rankings for six consecutive years through 2022. It is clear that the BOJ is considering lifting the policy in January to ensure it has flexibility in the future, he said. According to Reuters, Japan's Nikkei share average slipped more than 1% on Monday as cautious investors awaited hints from the Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda for a possible shift in its ultra-low rates policy. The Nikkei was down 1.06% at 32,620.75 by the midday break, while the broader Topix fell 1.32% to 2,301.60. According to Reuters, China's finance ministry has allocated a first batch of 237.9 billion yuan of funds from sovereign bonds as of Monday, in an effort to support the renovation of infrastructure in areas hit by natural disasters, state media CCTV reported. The funds were part of a plan unveiled in October when China said it would issue 1 trillion yuan of sovereign bonds to enhance disaster prevention infrastructure, the report said. According to Bloomberg, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's days in office may be numbered, with a recent poll showing an overwhelming majority of voters want the embattled leader out of the top job by the end of his term in September at the latest. While he's attempted to salvage his government by ousting ministers accused of concealing campaign funds, it's unclear whether he'll be able to stop the fallout from spreading, after reports that his own faction in the long-ruling Liberal Democratic Party is suspected of doing the same thing. According to Bloomberg, a vehicle used to track longer-dated U.S. government bonds surged into a bull market, as investors seek to end three years of pain on the Federal Reserve's willingness to consider interest rate cuts. The iShares 20-plus-year Treasury Bond ETF, a popular tool for betting on long-dated debt, jumped to touch 99.35 on Friday. That's a gain of 21% from the 16-year low reached on October 23, qualifying as a bull market. The gauge is still down more than 40% since it peaked in 2020. According to Reuters, China's Highwin Wealth Management said it is reviewing its outstanding business and will provide resolution plans to investors by month end, following missed payments on some investment products amid Chinese property sector woe. Highwin, whose products are primarily invested in real estate, said last week it had been unable to promptly fulfill client redemption requests. According to Bloomberg, a Chinese developer partially owned by the southern city of Shenzhen warned it can't pay interest due Wednesday as it races to win support from creditors to extend dollar bond deadlines, raising the risk of its first default. China's South City Holdings Limited said in a stock exchange filing that it doesn't have the resources to pay the interest of its 9% notes due July 2024, with $235 million of principal outstanding, by the end of a grace period December 20 citing liquidity and cash flow constraints from deteriorating operating environment affecting the real estate sector. According to Reuters, Asian fertilizer buyers are seeking alternatives to Chinese supplies on concerns the world's top exporter has become an increasingly unreliable supplier after curbs on shipments to protect its domestic market, buyers and analysts said. China is the world's biggest exporter of phosphate and a major supplier of urea but since 2021 it has imposed measures including export quotas and lengthy inspection requirements on the fertilizer ingredients to cool domestic prices.